Resolution of single slit and circular apertures. Consider two sources of light S1 and S2 point sources. If the two sources are far enough, their central maxima will not overlap on the screen. So we're looking at two sources of light, S1 and S2. Uh, there is an angle subtended by these sources, theta. And these sources will each have a diffraction pattern on the screen due to the single slit diffraction. The angle subtended by the sources at the slit is large enough for the diffraction patterns to be distinguishable. That is to say, the maxima of these two uh, sources on the diffraction pattern do not overlap, so they're clearly resolved. On the other hand, uh, if the angle subtended by the sources is so small that their diffraction patterns overlap, the images are not well resolved. So in this case, when we decrease the angle between the two, the diffraction pattern corresponding to source 1 and source 2 will have their maxima overlapping to some extent, and uh, we will have uh, a not very good resolution of these uh, two sources on the screen. So, uh, what is the condition for this just result case? That is the question uh, Rayleigh was asking. And the Ray uh, Rayleigh criterion for resolution of two sources is basically when the central maximum of one image falls on the first minimum of another image, they're said to be resolved. So, we will have uh, the uh, maximum of uh, one image falling on the a minimum of the other image. So this is the criterion. So these should be uh, falling uh, uh, on, uh, on the screen. So they should be coinciding on the screen for them to be just resolved. Um, so when, when is that condition uh, met? We have, uh, remember, the condition for destructive interference on the screen for the first minimum. Uh, the interference of rays coming from upper and lower portions of the slit give us a path difference uh, a over 2 sine theta equals uh, lambda over 2. So when sine theta is lambda over a, uh, we have this condition satisfied. When lambda is much less than a, sine theta becomes uh, theta. So when we have this very small angle theta, when we're looking at the angular uh, separation between the two sources. So this minimum angle turns out to be lambda over a. Okay, so once again, Rayleigh's criterion for resolution is that the maximum of one image should fall on the minimum of the other image. So this is, uh, this doesn't seem to be exactly satisfying that condition. So um, maybe we should say in not well resolved here. Uh, so the condition for just result, uh, or they're, when they're going to be said to be result, when this condition is met, when the maximum and the minimum will coincide. Okay, so uh, the angle subtended by the two sources at the slit must be greater than lambda over a, our minimum angle uh, lambda over a, if the images are to be result. But if we have a change in the shape of this aperture, uh, so if it is a circular aperture, we have a geometrical correction factor. If D is the capital D is the diameter of the aperture, the minimum angular resolution corresponds to 1.22 lambda divided by the diameter. So it was lambda over A. Now for a circular aperture, it's 1.22 lambda over D. Let's look at an example. A uh, light of wavelength 500 nanometers near the center of the visible spectrum enters a human eye. So we're talking about resolution of the eye. Although pupil diameter varies from person to person, let's estimate a daytime diameter of uh, 2 millimeters. Part A, estimate the limiting angle of resolution for this eye, assuming its resolution is limited only by diffraction. Uh, part B, determine the minimum separation distance D between the two point sources that the eye can distinguish if the point sources are a distance of 25 centimeters from the observer. Okay, 
So we have an angular separation between the two sources, theta minimum we're looking for. Rayleigh's resolution criterion tells us that this angular separation, theta minimum, should be 1.22 lambda over d because we have a circular aperture uh, in, in the eye, human eye. Uh, so we can substitute the numbers here, 1.22 times uh, the wavelength 500 uh, 10 to minus 9 meters the diameter uh, daytime diameter of the uh, pupil is 2 millimeters which is 2 times 10 to minus uh, 3 meters so uh, with that we find a minimum angular uh, separation of 3 times 10 to minus 4 radians uh, so this will be the minimum angular uh, separation and in part b uh, we if we look at this uh, situation uh, we have theta minimum uh, here uh, the angular separation between the two you can see that uh, from the symmetry of this problem we have a distance d between s1 and s2 so there's a distance d over 2 and d over 2 here so we have a right triangle uh, with one side uh, d over 2 and the other side is uh, basically l so it's the same angle that appears um, here so these angles will be theta minimum over 2 and theta minimum over 2. So if you were to uh, insert another uh, parallel here, you would see that this would basically divide this angle into two uh, and we would see half of it appearing on top and half of it appearing at the bottom. Okay, so uh, we can calculate this distance by looking at the tangent of this angle. Tangent theta minimum over 2 will be d over 2 over L. So that's what I'm going to do here. Tangent theta minimum over 2 will be d over 2 divided by L. So uh, we obtain, because the angle is small, uh, tangent theta is approximately equal to uh, theta. So theta minimum over 2 will be approximately equal to uh, d over 2L. So the 2's will cancel. And we can calculate the distance d as L multiplied by theta minimum. So what is that distance? So this distance will be L 25 centimeters, 25 10 to minus 2 times 3 10 to minus 4 uh, radians. So this will turn out to be uh, a distance of 8 times 10 to minus 3 centimeters. So that will be the minimum separation distance between the two sources. So we can go between the angle and the separation between the two sources using this uh, geometry. Okay, uh, let's look at another example. Resolution of a telescope. Each of the two telescopes at the Keck Observatory on the dormant Mauna Kea volcano in Hawaii has an effective diameter of 10 meters. What is its limiting angle of resolution for 600 nanometers light? Uh, now it has a diameter, so we can use Rayleigh's resolution criterion for circular apertures. Theta minimum is 1.22 lambda divided by the diameter d. This will be 1.22 times uh, lambda, which is 600 nanometers, uh, 610 to minus 9, divided by the diameter 10. So this gives us a minimum angular, uh, angle, minimum angle of resolution, 7.3 times 10 to minus 8 radians. 
Okay, so uh, this is a very, very small uh, angle, so it seems to be a very good performance for this telescope. However, there should be other factors we need to take into account. So let's note that here, uh, so we could have, there could be uh, other factors such as atmospheric blurring. So we have uh, gas molecules in the atmosphere that will cause some uh, light scattering and cause blurring at optical wavelengths. And this could limit the resolution of the telescope. So the criterion we're using here, Rayleigh's resolution criterion, is for diffraction limited uh, resolution problems. So we, we only considered the effect of diffraction uh, when the light coming from the source hits a single aperture. Uh, but if there are other effects in the problem, like the atmospheric blurring, uh, that may be dominance, uh, and therefore this minimum angle suggested by diffraction limited resolution is not uh, exactly what is limiting the resolution of the telescope in that case. All right. So to summarize, we talked about Rayleigh's resolution criterion. When we have two sources of light separated uh, by an angle theta, so the angle subtended by the two sources at the slit is theta. Uh, if theta is such that the diffraction, of, diffraction pattern of one source on the screen uh, has its central maximum falling on the first minimum of the other one. So if uh, you have the maximum falling on the uh, minimum of the other one, so that's the criterion for just resolution. So this is for diffraction limited resolution. Uh, so that's Riley's criterion. And that would be met when we have a over 2 sine theta equals lambda over 2. So you can uh, basically see that the uh, condition for destructive interference for the first minimum uh, gives us the angle to be lambda over a because this is a small angle. We can replace sine theta with theta. But for a geometrical uh, correction factor of 1.22, we can change the shape of the aperture to a circular aperture. And in that case, we have the same result, 1.22 lambda divided by the diameter of the aperture. So we have seen one application of Rayleigh's resolution criterion. When we look at the resolution of the eye, we place two sources at a distance d. We want to calculate the minimum angular separation between them. Now, knowing that our pupil is has a circle, circular shape with a daytime diameter of two millimeters, we can use this criterion, and we can find the separation distance using the geometry here because we have a symmetric. Uh, case here. So if, we, if you have a line that's parallel to the bottom and top lines here, you can see that this theta minimum is divided into two. So we can use the tangent of the angle to calculate the relationship between uh, D and the angle. And uh, this basically gives us our answer for the minimum uh, separation distance D. And then we looked at a problem uh, for the resolution of a telescope, which also has a circular uh, aperture, uh, 1.22 lambda over d, suggested us a minimum angular uh, distance to be 1.7.3 10 to minus 8 radians, which is rather small. Uh, we know that that's not the minimum resolution uh, of a telescope usually because there are other factors such as atmospheric blurring. So that's the word of caution here. The analysis that we have done here is only for diffraction limited resolution.